Hi there and welcome to another edition of Bustanet. My name is Rashidi and you're back here with the Torino Diaries. Finally, I'm back with the save. I started the whole of FM 2016 with for YouTube, I think. And here, I'm going to try and get to know my side again. I think we should all do that. This was a save that I started. I think they're in their fourth season right now. And they are having a match against Ajax coming up soon. As a club, they are the defending UEFA Champions League winners. They've won the Serie A nine times, um, you know, under my guidance. They've won the Champions League and the Serie A twice, I think, or three times. I can't remember. I haven't played the game for a while, so I'm gonna have, I'm gonna struggle. And apparently, I've been using a four-three-one-two. I totally forgot. I thought I was using a four-four-one-one. Yeah, I think this was the system I was using. Well, what's the story of the safe? I was traveling in the US for about two weeks and I brought my laptop along and the Torino safe was in it and the whole plan was to do a nice um, Torino run. Unfortunately, the laptop got crushed. Thankfully, I managed to salvage the game. However, <laughs> I just realized that I played quite a lot of games. Um, I think the last show covered Sassuolo and Lazio and then I, won on, I went on this run. As you can see, it's a pretty huge run except for the 3-1 defeat to Barcelona at home even. At home, they beat us at home 3-1. They completely annihilated us. I mean, looking at the match stats alone, um, Barcelona had 40 less possession. We had more possession, but who the hell cares about a possession when you can't even get those two clear-cut chances on goal counters? So they got their revenge on us, uh, even though they had a player sent off right towards the end. We played a 4-3-1-2 against yeah, whatever you want to call this, a 4-4-2-2 DM. Um, it's uh, disappointing that we couldn't do the deed uh, to them again. And um, when we have now got a match against Ajax coming up, in terms of where we are in the league, we're top of the table. Where are we in the champ? Where are we in the Champions League? We're second in the Champions League table uh, after that defeat to Barcelona. We need to beat Ajax to guarantee qualification. As far as my players are concerned, well, the players they are looking solid. Look at Bruno Perez and Daniel Baselli, 8.17, 8.14. These are great numbers to have for a side. I, I don't see eights in my saving Kingstonian, which brings me to another point. Whenever you play with a team that has got a set DNA and you've already chosen your side and you basically have things sorted with your team, you know, there's, you know the players, you've got the best players you can find and money is not an issue. You can go out and spend $16 million on a player. When you reach that kind of a situation, tactics are usually very easy and I start becoming a, you know, and I, I start messing with tactics a lot. I become really experimental with my tactics. But when you're playing with a side like Kingstonian, a lower league side, or even an average side, like a middle of the table side, things aren't the same. With those kind of sides, you need to be a lot more disciplined. So, and you need to pay more attention to tactics. If you wanted to learn and try different tactics and see what they do. Play it with Barcelona. Play it with a really good side. Why? You can afford to make mistakes. I give the same advice every... I've been giving this... I've been giving the same advice since 1998. If you want to play and learn tactics, never pick a middle table side. Use FM Touch. I mean, now we have FM Touch, of course. And also pick a really good side. Pick a side that can afford to buy players because then you can find out whether or not the attributes are really close. Um, you can pick players. You're going to have a lot of latitude to make mistakes. And you probably can try experiments a lot more. But if you were to try the same thing with a club like Kingstonian, you can't. You, you have to pick like three or four attributes and then go, okay, these are going to be the way I define my style. But with clubs like Barcelona, you can change your style. You can go from playing a defensive strategy one day and then go, okay, I'm, I want to try something different. And you can do that because you have the players for that. You just don't have the same luxury in an LLM side. So if you're not very clear on using tactics, don't try and be... I mean, even me, I, when I first started out playing this game, it took me a long time before I settled on what I'm... I mean, yeah... It took me a while before I settled on, you know, doing what I want to do. It's because I spent a lot of time understanding the engine first. And today, after the tactical creator and all this, um, making things easy with shouts and stuff, I tell you something, this game is really, really a lot easier than it was back uh, back in CMO3 or, or, or 1. Or, well, with the tactical creator and the shouts, trust me, it's a heck of a lot easier. It's just that some people tend to overcomplicate the game way too much. You know, they, they add a lot of things into it and say, you have to do this, you have to do that. Trust me. 
leave training on balance if you're not very sure of training. You're going to get it right. Uh, when it comes to your systems and your tactics and everything else, keep it simple. Try, have you ever seen me use Shadow Striker or Rolling Playmaker or Tricotista? I haven't even used any of those. Trust me, the game is that easy. All right, so we are away from home. Ajax, it's a match we want to win. We beat an Ajax already using a 4 3 1 2 at home. This time they're lining up in a 4 4 1 1. I plan to use my 4 4 1 1 system as well. I'm just looking at the way I've already set my 4411 system previously and I'm just guessing now how I played it. So I guess it was pretty compact going up. Now I think I want to try something and it's pro or tactics are very fluid as well. Play out a defense, mix passing, mix crosses. No, this should be whipped. Okay, and here I counter the opposition instructions. Now I'm just going to set all these up so that I don't have to do them again. Oh, they've already been set up. Okay, now I come back to the setup tactic. I've got my players, Matthias Perez, Z Gomez. Z Gomez isn't the top scorer. The top scorer in the competition is actually Andre Bellotti. And maybe play structure. See how much... Oh, then I can't go structured. I'm not that accomplished yet. Alright, so I haven't done a lot of that. <laughs> so you can see... Okay, proceed to the match boys. Let's see what we can do. If you're wondering what skin this is, it's the G2FM skin. Alright, uh, so here we are. Pretty comfortable group. But Ajax, um, well, they need to turn things around. They need to start beating us. Calm, we're good run, so go impress me boys. Let's start this match. Let's see what happens. Oh, there was a loud holler from the fans as the match starts. Here we go. Um, okay, a total of different UI and I'm totally lost as well. Why is this showing me so many things? I'm not really interested in all this. I just want to see the ratings. You know, G2FM skin is interesting because they've got key interceptions, key passes, dribbles, shots on target and mistakes. Well, seems like Torino have had the better start, but possession seems to be all there. So we'll change things a bit. We'll go and we'll change it to shorter passing. We'll increase the tempo and work ball into box. Yeah, that's me, arcadey. When I play the game, it feels like an arcade game nowadays. Bruno Perez out to D. Alejandro. Alejandro cuts inside, he crosses, and he can't find a player. Gore gets the ball. Kefton Bell. Kefton Bell hoofs it up. Glick reads that really well, and Matthias Pereira picks that up. But Nasi looks up, finds the Alejandro. Alejandro is one of the best wingers I've seen play. Unfortunately, he can't beat Yunus, so he's not one of the best today. Bergu is to Gore. 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 Almost goals. Okay, Belotti with the ball. <laughs> okay, he's out. He's got support. Come on, Belotti. Step on the ball, that idiot. Bergu is offside. Thank you very much. What was Bellotti doing? You see, that's why I don't like to see all these stupid stats. Okay, um, alright, he's injured. I'll have to take him off because Mino is playing in a pretty important position. And I'll bring on Danino Avila. This is just a bit disconcerting. I don't like all this mistake, mistake, mistake. It's very delusional. Okay, but I guess, honestly speaking, um, yeah, there's no point. You just want to see average ratings. That's all you need to know in the game. Because uh, it's an easy metric. Uh, you know, if your player is 6.4, everybody else is running with 6.6. That's enough. Can you imagine adding more? So I, I'm not a big fan of that that, you, that UI. Benazi out wide to Bruno Perez, who's looking up. Checks back to the Alejandro. Alejandro looks in, looks out, looks in. Benazi, Benazi, come on, boy. Put it back to Baselli. Baselli out wide again to Bruno Perez. These boys are just having fun. The Alejandro... Diana cuts inside, looks up. Oh, this is my Leicester system. Bellotti scores. Yeah, this is what I was trying. I mean, this is not, I won't call it the Leicester system. This is more or less like the Leicester system where the right winger cuts in like uh, Riyad Mahrez. You can see Alejandro is actually my right winger, but he's in a very central position, creating chances for Bellotti. Uh, beautiful. Good, good goal. Oh, and you can see why I like this tactic. <laughs> Alright, boys, you're doing well. This is why I don't like... Okay, now, Matthias Pereira is at 6.4. And nothing else, you know. You, you think he's, he's only made two mistakes. But honestly, 6.4 rating as a team that's already doing quite well is a bit disconcerting. 
So we'll have to give him better watch how he does in the next few minutes. Danilo Evola scores. It's two goals, boys. We're off and running. Yes, Torino, after taking the manager, after taking a holiday break, has come back and they're back to winning ways. De Leandro. De Leandro to Danilo Avala. <laughs> that was an easy free kick. And this is not the time when I want to see my players getting bad ratings. I'm going to be looking at this boy, Matthias Pereira, very, very closely. Balotti, back to Benassi. Benassi, back to Marlon. Bruno Perez. Oh yeah, now I remember the system. I, I like the system because yeah, I should be playing a 4-4-1-1 more with um, Torino because I've created a side which actually have two wingers who can cut inside and do all kinds of Riyad Mahrez kind of nonsense. So yeah, I'm, Alejandro can do that on the right flank and Sanchez Mino can do it on the left flank. So if I, if I ever decided that the left flank is more vulnerable, I release Sanchez Mino on that side, change his role. And if I think the right flank is more vulnerable, I can do that with Alejandro. Yeah, it's a bit nice. Abazoya gets the ball back from Mr. Bellotti and the uh, boys should be able to pick this up. Yes, Baselli to Danilo Avila, who's already cut inside happily. Matthias Pereira to Di Alejandro. Alejandro looks up, oh, he skips past the challenge and he's in a position to cross to Balotti and Balotti almost scores the goal, Avala is inside the box Avala, oh, that's a goal kick to IFC Ajax Okay, so now it's time for me to make small tweaks to the system I think I know what I did Edit, alright, so you shall pass it shorter Mark tighter and close down much more just I'm just doing something crazy mark title close down much more I'm just gonna make them a lot more um, dis uh, dangerous right now in terms of trying to win the ball back okay fewer risky passes shoot less often close down more okay mm pass it shorter stay wider okay all right all right boys confirm the changes let's go well, Torino looking really good for the win. Um, they haven't really been threatened this match. The highlights haven't really showed us having to deal with a lot of dangerous situations. On the other hand, most of the highlights have been of us uh, carving, out, carving them out for opportunities. It's been a great game. 2-0 win away to Ajax in the Champions League. Puts us in a really good position. Nine points gathered. We have a match against Barcelona. Uh, Why well, I'm not too worried. We are very qualified for the next round. Here we go. Barcelona, Hammering Club, Bruch, Luis Suarez, Gerard Pique, Neymar, Yamalenko all getting in on the act. It's a really good result for us. Okay, so our next match is going to be a league match against Roma. We are at home to Roma. I just have to go through this quickly. And let's see what how Roma is going to line up. I'm going to just use my 4-3-3. Or rather 4-3-1-2. Okay, because this is... But unfortunately, I don't believe in uh, playing ball-winning midfielders anymore. I don't really use them a lot in most of my matches now. Uh, they should be fine. Okay, Mark Taita. Uh, okay, central midfielder on support. And he can mark tighter. Okay. This guy, I'm going to turn him to support. And that should be fine. Alright. That's our lineup. Alright. Here we go. Match is off. Pelotti will play back to Polsano. Polsano to Silva. Silva now brings the ball up. And we go to a commercial break. Uh, Silva with the throw. Pelotti playing deep. Comes out to bring the ball up. Ah, but he's pass. That's slack. That was slack. Maybe I shouldn't be playing him in such a position. Ball goes out to Pellegrini. They're countering a Marlin as well. Johnson now has the ball. Gokan is in the box. Shoots Padelli with a strong left. Corner. Gokan takes it. Ball goes up. Johnson rises up. We'll have to change this corner routine because Matthias Pereira is doing bugger all standing there. Alright, I'm challenging you to be a wing back on attack. Let's go boys. Let's 
put some pressure on Roma. It's been us. There's been them all the way. Silva with the throw to Baselli. Baselli comes in, back heels it to Silva. Silva drills it through to Balotti. Balotti works himself up for a shot, but he's shot his team. Martinelli holds on to the ball and boots it upfield. Zico will get to this, but no, that was a great chance of Bolsano. Baselli to Alan. Alan again goes out wide, looks for support. Gaston Silva does the run, picks it up. Gaston Silva checks, crosses, Balotti rises, and what a header. I was just about to say, Roma have taken the lead. <laughs> Shit. Silver, Pallotti. Oh, brilliant. Yes, let's keep this up. Okay, he hits, thank goodness, of Polsano. Marlon, what a ball to Bruno Perez, the genius, the right fullback. Oh, he's playing as a wing back. He's got two players to beat. Plays it back to Baselli. Baselli to Alan. Alan plays it wide to Gaston Silva. Who's supporting and Silva checks, crosses, Belotti with another header and Fimbo Gasson just misses it. Oh man. Matthias Pereira is not having a very good game at 6.6. We'll be bringing Pucciarelli on if Pereira doesn't play any better. Matthias Pereira's ratings keep dropping. Popa with the free kick drops one. Oh, that was such a sad free kick. Bruno Perez to Popa. Popa checks inside. He's got a few players. Oh, they tackled him. Insignia. He didn't have the composure to beat those players. Insignia back down to panic. Panic, please panic. Vulcan. Oh, plays a brilliant ball for Johnson. Johnson out white crosses. Hey, Zico. Padelli. Padelli beats the battle. Wins the battles, rather. Beats the battle. My English is getting shitty as I keep playing. Daniel De Rossi. Yes, he got another yellow card. Yes, you know, Daniel De Rossi has been sent off. Roma's day is just going from bad to worse. Ross De Rossi has just been sent off after a, a bad challenge of Bellotti. Silva now with the ball. Alan to Baselli. Baselli back to Matthias Pereira. Pereira plays it wide to Silva. Torino still have only a slender one goal lead. Alan now comes inside the box, lays it off a Popa, Popa shoots, and he hits the upright again. Hmm. Okay, well, now that Alan has picked up a card and I have the luxury, I can take him off. Alright. I can bring on this old man called Luca Rigoni. Okay, Luca Rigoni, you can play for Alan. And Pereira, you come off for Mr. Pucci. And I'll tell my boys that they should be playing a lot better than that. Dumbia, Insignia, Nangolan. Okay, so now we'll change things around. I just noticed something. They're a bit more attacking now. Dumba with the ball now. Place it to Strutman. Strutman out wide to Pellegrini. No relationship to Manuel Pellegrini. Oh, it's a penalty, you freaking idiot, Marlon! You stupid! Fool! Ah, for nothing, Marlon has given them a penalty and a way back into this match. Now, Padelli gets himself set. Panic will send it to the wrong side. Okay, so we are goal. <sighs> Gotta work again. Alright. Some rapid changes now. We have to get a winner. Still early days, we're gonna go wider. Marlon's day is not getting any better. Okay, last throw of the dice is coming and we might take Fimbogasan off and put in Mr. Parigi. Do it now. Let's not waste any more time. Parigi is coming on. On the 56th minute. 70 minutes. They're willing to pick up cards and he Bruno Perez with the throw. Paragini is inside the box. Brings it out really well. Lays it back for Perez. Perez drills it. Pucciarelli scores! Yes! Ah, Torino. Bruno Perez, Paragini, and Pucciarelli. Paragini, what a take. Plays it back to Bruno Perez, drills it across the face to the goal. Pucci is unmarked. Just smashes the ball into the back of the net. Pucci has come good in so many of my matches. Attacking fluid. We're just throwing everything at them because I can't believe if I lose or draw this game. Paselli. 
Bruno Perez chips it out to Paragini. Paragini takes it down. Looks up. Looks into the box. Cuts inside the box. The boy is trying to shoot a goal from the outside of his boot. The ball skimmed the... Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. 22 shots on goal and we not one clear-cut chance. We need to definitely work on tactics. Bruno Perez with the throw. Goes all the way to Silva. What a throw that turned out to be. Silva tries to shoot Martinelli. Saves the day for them. Unfortunately, it saves them from getting going down a goal further. Yes, that was a good match. Oh, not really. That was a pathetic match. They didn't play very well. We play horribly. Look at the stats. Okay. Um, we had 27 shots on goal. I don't really care about shots on goal. 8 on target and 12 off target, but no clear cut chances. That says a lot. Uh, it means that something is wrong with my front three combination. It's not really ideal. So we'll have to work on that. Uh, so we'll just make one or two more tweaks and we should be fine with the 4 3 1 2. I just, I just don't like If this guy is charging up, then maybe I need to make this guy into a deep line for a support and this guy into a de defensive forward on defense. Okay, alright. This might be a better combination. because Only because this guy is coming in late. So because there's the gaps, I want to create more gaps. Well, I won't say it's an okay result. It was a pathetic result. We played really badly. So the 4-3-1-2 needs to be refined some more. And I'll probably start mess. You know, Torino save is the one way up. Okay, why don't we play 4 2 3 1? Why don't we try something different? That's me. I'm, I like to do that with sites that are good. And uh, I do apologize. It's taken so long to do a Torino save. I hope you enjoyed it. I had fun doing it, although the match wasn't you know, by any means a stellar performance. But we still are at the summit of the Serie A. Uh, four points clear of the rest. Played one game extra. Juventus chasing us right now. If you have any questions, you know where you can find me. You can find me at Pastanet. Uh, that's my Twitter handle or you can uh, look me up at addictedtofm.com if you have any questions please drop me a comment on the YouTube channel like and subscribe to the show and as always if there's anything that you want me to cover or do please let me know and I'll try and do it and if you need more information you can find out about mentality and the effect shape can have on your tactics by watching the dark arts of attacking football video and if you want to find out how I play with an LLM site where tactics can be a lot more different, you can watch the Kingstonian Diaries. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. I hope to catch up with you guys again soon. Bye-bye.